Ayo! Hello Fantastics, it's Mr. Clintastic, and I'm back with a Murders at Karlov Manor set review. Now I'll be going over the green spells. Alright. <clears throat> so far we've gone over white, blue, black, and red. I'll be clipping up these videos and having them on my YouTube and Facebook if you would like to review those coming up. So, just a reminder, this review is for Limited in Magic the Gathering which means it's focused on draft and sealed events. I've also given a reminder of what draft and sealed is on my channel. So yeah, my rating system is based on a 0 to 5 rating. Um, <coughs> 0 being unplayable, 5 being, you know, slam dunk, run this every time. And I don't even know if I've given something a 5 yet. I think one of the higher ratings I've given is 4.5. Um... Anyway, turn that off. <laughs> I think the highest I've given is like 4.5. And if I recall, those were the two things like uh, Vindicator and Massacre Girl. Which both of those cards, after, you know, after reading the cards so far, I think those might be closer to a 5. But until the, until the format really gets going, I, I, I don't know yet. Those are some of the more powerful creatures I've seen so far. So anyway, like I said, we're getting to green. Let's do it. First we have Undergrowth Recon. It is a three mana, one generic, two green enchantment, mythic. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Hmm. I kind of want to put this at a zero. I feel like this is almost unplayable. I haven't seen the lands though. So if you have lands that can come back from the yard, you know, say you run out like something like an Evolving Wilds on turn one or two, you play this on turn three, on turn four you're getting your like mana back every turn to thin your whole build out over the course of the game because it's going to do it. You know, you're going to make it so you're not drawing lands every turn. I think this, I don't think this is totally unplayable. I think this is probably a one. The right person, right time, they're going to see a lot of work out of this. Me, I'd probably make it look like absolute garbage. So I'm going to give it a one and see if anyone plays out Undergrowth Recon and takes off on me. <clears throat> Next we have the Pride of the Whole Clade. It is an 11 mana, 10 generic and a green, Crocodile Elk Turtle Mythic. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total toughness of creatures you control. It's a defender, and you can pay 2 generic to blue until in turn. Target creature you control gets plus 1 0. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw cards equal to its toughness and can attack as though it didn't have a defender. A 215. What are you like? I'm going to evaluate this on merit alone just by itself. If you're running this by itself, this is a top card of your library. You better, you have nothing else going on. You better have 11 mana ready and waiting for you to play this spell. Then you're only getting a two, you're getting a two power creature for that much. And then even if you pump it, it's only going up to three. This is a mythic spell. Like I said, this is a limited review. So I'm not too worried about constructed and all that. In the limited format, this is boo boo. If someone beats me with this, it's going to be I'm I'm going to be absolutely shocked. You know, cuz in my head they're going to be trying to run a bunch of defenders or big butt creatures to get this out as fast as possible. They're going to jam this out and it's like, "Cool, I like to run flyers anyway. This doesn't have reach. I'm going to fly right over it." Granted, it can give those other defenders the ability to attack. If they have really low attack like this, I'm still not going to care. <laughs> I'm still not going to care. So the pride of the whole clay, I mean, it, it's really looking... Disrespectfully, it's looking like a one. It's looking really, really bad by itself. Now, in other decks, other, you know, formats... I think I would have to really think on it, but for what I'm focused on, 
I'm not playing it. <clears throat> I'm not. I don't think I'll even be fooled into playing or even trying it. Eleven mana, get it out of my face. I'm putting it at one. And if I, and as soon as I see someone play it and I beat them, I'm putting it to zero. I promise you. Next we have Hide in Plain Sight, four mana, three generic, and a green. Look at the top five cards of your library, cloak two of them, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I'm going to give this a 2.75. Honestly, I, it might be a 3. It, it kind of cloaks for free. If that makes sense. Or, or disguises. Disguise is really strong in the fact that these creatures can be anything. If you're able for one card to play out two disguised creatures and get value off of them, that's great. And even then, you can cloak lands. You could turn spells or that, that weren't able to attack prior or block prior. You could turn those into threats. I, I think this is a I think this is a, a three at least. It's a four mana make two creatures and I know I didn't want to give the other one that four mana one I think in red it made two two twos essentially this one allows you to look into your library five cards deep pick the two things you need it turns a, something potentially that's not usable into something usable I think this is a, it's just way better so I'm gonna give this a, I'm gonna give this a three. I like this card a lot. Next we have Audience with Tristani, three mana, two generic, and a green. You create a zero one plant token, then draw cards equal to the number of differently named creatures creature tokens you control. I'm gonna put that at zero. Audience with Tristani is not gonna draw you hardly any cards ever. Create a zero one plant creature token. If that's the only creature token you got, you're paying three mana to draw one card. One. No, no, zero. Don't. <laughs> I'm probably not playing this at all. It's not even giving me a one one. <clears throat> Case of the locked hot house. Four mana, three generic, and a green. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. To solve, you control seven or more lands. That's that's probably one of the easier ones you know you just play out then if it's solved you may look at top card of your library anytime you may play lands and cast creature and enchantment spells from the top of your library what do you mean what do you mean this sounds great this sounds great this isn't necessarily drawing your cards but it's manipulating the top of your library and giving you access to a lot of your spells way sooner So yeah, I, I'm a fan of this. Now granted, it doesn't, if this was search your library for a land, put it on the battlefield, and then to solve you have seven, I like it would be excellent then. I want to give it a three, but I think that's an overrating on it. I think that's an overrating just simply based off my initial excitement. The first part of this card is getting you nothing. If you have no land in your hand on that turn four, no additional, it gets you nothing. And until you have seven lands, it does nothing. Ah, I'm going to have to give it a, like a one. And I think if you build around it, you can take it up to two. But this isn't winning games by itself. It's just something that... Kind of like bait cards. You know, they look really good. It's like, oh man, I love these abilities. But when you play different formats and you enjoy different kind of cards, I think that can happen. It's almost like, ah, it's a misjudgment. Because you, you think you can bring that ability to this format. And it's like, ah, well, if you really look at it, it's a format of do-nothing card until you have seven lands on the board. Oh, my feelings. <laughs> and, you know, constructed players, we want to build around and build things up and make it work. Sometimes that's not what's going to happen. Sometimes... You're just gonna overhype a card and then be hurt when that card is your top deck and you have nothing to show for it. <clears throat> so that's the rant. I'm gonna put that at a 
I'm gonna put case of the locked hot house at one, and if someone's able to build around it, I think it can go up to a two. Next, we have Arch Druid's Charm, three mana, three grain. It's an instant, choose one, search your library for a creature or land, reveal it, put it on the battlefield tapped if it's a land, otherwise put it into your hand, shuffle. Instant speed, that's cool. Or you can put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control, okay, cool. Or you can exile target artifact or enchantment, cool. I'm going to put this at a... Mm -hmm. I think I gotta put it at a 3. The mana cost is tough, so it's not like 4 or 5 mana, but it's 3 green specifically, locking you into that green color when most of the time people want to at least play 2 to 3 colors. Um, I like the fact that it can it's a fight spell, but once again, that, that mana cost is really what's killing it. That is what is killing it right now. <clears throat> so yeah, I think it's a 3, I think it's totally playable. You can probably want to run as many of these as you can. If, with as many green sources as you can obtain. So yeah, I'd run it. Um, I just think it's going to be difficult to play with three green picks. Pips. Next we have Analyze the Pollen, a one green sorcery. As an additional cost to cast a spell, you may collect Evidence 8. You can search your library for a basic land card if evidence was collected. Search your library for a creature or land. Reveal that card, put it in your hand, then shuffle. How are y'all feeling about collect evidence? Because collect evidence is coming off really, really trash. It's coming off so trash to me. And for this, this is collect evidence 8 on a 1 mana spell. So I have to have 8 mana in the graveyard already. I like to recycle. If I can, I'll play my instants and sorceries back from the yard. I'll play my creatures back from the yard. I'm not big on wanting to exile things from my library, at my graveyard. So this isn't exciting to me. Um, <clears throat> it tutors you up a, sor a land card, basically, for one. I mean, it's playable. It's playable. It's not winning you games, but it's playable. And I guess late game, it can find you something. I'm gonna give it a two. I don't think it's totally trash. I'm just not a huge fan of collect evidence. I'll have to just keep saying that. Next we have Axbane Ferox, four mana, two generic, two green, beast, death touch, haste, solid. Death touch and haste. Ward, collect evidence four. So if they wanna target it, they have to collect evidence four from their yard. And it's a four four. I'm giving this a four. I, I mean, give and it's not even legendary give them all to me give me I don't know four of these guys and I if you give me four of these in draft how do I lose they have to board wipe me they do that's the only way which is, is possible because I will jam all four of them out death touch haste the only thing they're missing is like some kind of evasion you know but there's first strike out there you give something like this first strike or pfft, blowing people out of the water immediately you throw trample into the mix oh my god that hurt so I'm gonna give this a four I think this is an all-around solid card I don't think it's average by any means um, and I think every time you see it unless there's a really good removal spell in the pack this is what you're gonna want to go for <clears throat> next we have sharp-eyed Ricky it's two mana one generic and a green human detective with vigilance when it ETBs under your control, no, whenever a creature ETBs under your control, if its power is greater than Sharp Eyed Ricky, or its toughness is greater than Sharp Eyed Ricky, put a 1 1 counter on Sharp Eyed Ricky and investigate. It's a 2 2. A 2 2 for 2. That if a, any, basically any creature comes out with greater anything than it, you get a, a counter on it, and you get to draw a card with the investigate, with the clue. I like it. Um, I think this is like a. I hate to straight up say four, but it's the mana cost for me. You know, it's it do, it gives you a lot of value for the cost of the card. Two mana, two two vigilant. It's a bear. And I know I was like, well, two two for two isn't necessarily going to win you games by themselves. This ability is so easy to fire off. It's just so easy. I, maybe it's a three point five. Maybe I'm trying to overhype it. But I'm like, you play this on turn two, 
there's a great chance on turn three and turn four you're gonna be putting a counter on this making this a three three into a four four and making two clue tokens like I see that so clearly in my mind I'm gonna rank it a four I think it's right here along the lines of this fair rocks and I think it's mana cost even takes it a little higher <clears throat> Next we have a Killer Among Us, 5 mana enchantment. Whenever a Killer Among Us enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one human creature token, a 1-1 one, one merfolk creature token, and a 1-1 one, one goblin token. Secretly choose human, merfolk, or goblin. Sacrifice a Killer Among Us, reveal the chosen creature type. If target attacking creature token is the type, put 3 1-1 one, one counters on it and it gains death touch until end of turn. I, I mean, the card is cool. The card is cool. Five mana is not where I want to be in limited. I tell y'all that. That's been just my echo. Five mana is not great in limited. It's a five mana make three creature tokens. And you can pump that creature token by three. So you for five mana, you're generating three power, six power. That's how I see it. <clears throat> I'm going to put it at a 2, simply off mana cost. It's not generating you these overpowered creatures. I think it's fun to consider. And I like the fact that it, it has a recursive value to it. You know, you, you bounce this somehow or get to replay it. Especially late game, you're frustrating somebody. But overall, I don't think it's the most excellent card. It's probably really a 1, if I think about it. But out of the fact that, you know, I would want to see how it works, i give it a 2. Next we have Rope, Green, Clue, Equipment. Equip creature gets one, well, plus one, plus two, and has reach, can't be blocked, and you can sack it, draw a card. One, two, and reach is not that great when you have one O in first strike. Like, I'm, I know I'm comparing these by, the, by each other, but essentially they're all the same thing. You know, they modify a creature and draw a card. So that's kind of where I, why I feel like that's necessary to compare them to each other. Um, I think this is a little bit better than black. So right now I think it's white. Then for me, white, red, blue, green, then black. I think this is a little bit better than black. <clears throat> No, no, black gives you um, gives you two O. So I think green is probably the worst. Actually, it doesn't give the most power. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a one. It's just not something I'm excited to play or see see too often. Next is hard hitting question: A green sorcery target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature you, or planeswalker you don't control. Very cheap. You know, um, it scales up over the course of a game. The bigger your creatures. The more damage you're dealing to them, and it's not necessarily in reverse. I'm gonna give this a, a two because it does need assistance. So it's not like the um, red cards where it's like, well, you know, shock. I gave a three-two instantly. It does things by itself. You know, the other card um, that dealt three damage to target creature for two it does it by itself. This one you gotta have a creature out. The mana cost makes it great, but the assistant it needs brings it below average for me. Next we have Flourish and Bloomkin, two mana, one generic and a green. Plant Elemental, it gets one one for each forest you control. That's incentivizing mono green, I will say. Has Disguise five, four generic and a green. And when it's turned face up, search your library for up to two forests, reveal them, put one on the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand, shuffle. It's a zero zero. Huh. I'm gonna give this a 2.5. Like, I don't think it's terrible, and I, I this is probably just a two. It's a two mana one one that scales up, that you can play out for three and flip over and get two forests. 
I think this is a 2 that goes up to at least a 2.5 or a 3 in a mono green deck. But in any other deck, I think it's just a 2. It's not going to perform how you want if you're running two or more colors. And I think that's what I have to base this on. We shall see, though. I'm going to give Flourishing Bloomkin a 2. Next, we have Glint Weaver, a 7 mana, 5 generic, 2 green spider with reach. When it ETBs, distribute 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters among 1, 2, or 3 target creatures. Then you gain life equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. It's a 3 3. A 7 mana 3 3. I... No, I'm not doing it. I'm never doing it. The opponent might do it, you know. I'm um, going to get a 7 mana 6. So. It comes out, you get a 7 mana 6-6 six, six with reach and gain life and gain 6 life. People are gonna people are gonna run it. I'ma see this in my face. So I'll give it a two. But I don't know if I want to run it. I think this is gonna clog up a lot of hands. I wish I wish Arena had a uh, reveal opponent's hand feature so you can see what they had left. So I could kinda know like, oh, I'm glad I didn't run things like this. I'ma give it a two because I think other players are gonna play it. His stats are there, which is his stats are there, but eh. And you can give the three one one counters to something else. It's simply the mana cost is absolute garbage. Next we have case of trample of the trampled garden, three mana, two generic, and a green. When this case enters the battlefield, distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two target creatures you control. To solve creatures you control have power total power eight or greater. And then, if it's solved, whenever you attack, put a 1-1 counter on target attacking creature. It gains trample until end of turn. 3 mana, put two 1-1 counters on one or two creatures. Okay. To solve, have to have 8 or more power. Uh, and if it's solved, it puts a counter every turn. I'm going to put this at a 2. I think this is a build around as well. You know, if you can build around it, great. You know, you got your flyers up there. I always use flyers as an example. But you got your 1-1 one, one flyers up there, you play this on turn 3, make them 3-3 three, three, or 2-2-2 two, 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 two threats. That's not too bad. Um, getting this to to solved point though, I don't know how fast you'll be able to do that. And that's kind of why I'm giving it a 2. If this was really, really easy to pull off and it was putting in those counters, it would easily be a 2.5. But this isn't going to win the game by itself. And I think that's something too, like for a card to be really good for me, I kind of need it to win a game almost by itself. So even with that red card that deals three damage to a creature, creature for two, I may need to drop that to like 2.5 or 2.75, because it's not gonna win the game. It's gonna always just deal with a board state, but not win the game. And that's what we're trying to do here. So yeah, I'm gonna give this a um, 2.5, or actually a 2.0, and see how it works. Next we have Sample Collector, three mana, two generic, and a green, Troll Detective. When it attacks, you may collect evidence 3. When you do, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. It's a 2-3. I get this a 2.5. It's playable. I don't like collect evidence, but, you know. It's alright. Maybe it should have like 2.75. It's just under exciting. <laughs> It's just under exciting. Next we have Hedge Whisperer, a one green elf druid detective. You may choose not to untap Hedge Whisperer during your untap step. Pay four, three generic and a green. Tap it, collect evidence four. Target land you, contr you control becomes a five five green plant board creature with haste. As long as Hedge Whisperer remains tapped, it's still on land. It's a zero three. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this 2.5 the first few turns of the game until you get to turn 4 it does nothing it's just a 0-3 that really does nothing for you and then it makes a 5-5 green board later it may be too late by then I'm gonna give this and I think I'm gonna give this both 2.5s like they're not they can help you win games eventually but initially they're just like eh so yeah 2.75 here and a 2.5 for the 
Hedge Whisper, and it's probably like a 2.0. It just, you gotta support it and really be able to get that boar across the line. And I think that's something else I need to consider in my rating too, like, yeah, just because you're a creature with power and toughness, like, how good are you at getting over the line? Next we have Covert Ambusher, 5 mana, 3 generic, 2 green, Worm Horror, when it ETB, ETBs or is turned face up, target creature blocks his turn if able, disguise 5, it's a 4-5, it's just hard to play. 5 mana, 4-5. I'm not too excited about you can run it out at three and flip it for five still not excited about I'm gonna put it at a two next we have leg get a leg up a green mana instant until in the turn target creature gets one one for each creature you control and gains reach that could have been a blowout if it would have said trample that would have been a blowout this could still win the games like if you're sitting there with five creatures and they don't block one of them and you pump five for one mana. That's insane. But you still gotta have the build around aspect of it. So I'm gonna put it at a two. Gotta be able to build around it. Gotta have the right conditions going. Next we have Aftermath Analyst. Two mana. Elf Detective. One of ETB's mill three cards. I don't like that. You can sack it for four. Three generic and a green. Return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Alright, so yeah, um, a 2 mana 1 3 playable, you know. But it makes you mill. But it can help ramp. I'm gonna put this at 2.5. Like, some of these cards, creatures that are in this 1 to 3 mana range that can do something, I'm like, eh, it's playable. But at 3, I'm like, okay, this is almost like, boom, I want this almost every time. I can't necessarily say that with the, the analyst. I don't want to play this. So I'm going to put this at a, like a 2 to 2.5. I really have to see it at work. I don't like milling myself either. A lot of this is going to be a biased standpoint for me. Next we have Pompous Gadabout. 3 mana, 2 generic, and a green. Has hexproof as long as it's your turn. And it can't be blocked with creatures that don't have a name, so it can't be blocked by the disguised creatures. It's a 4 2. A, four, a 3 mana, 4 2, with hexproof on your turn. You can pump it however you like it. You can do whatever you want and not have to worry about being blown out. And the disguised creature is almost unblockable. Hey, what up, Kyle? Thank you for pulling up. Hope you're doing well today. I was saying. Hold on. <laughs> Let me fix that. Saying I'm I'm playing Diablo. I'm not playing Diablo. I'm not, technically, I'm not I'm not playing anything. I'm, let's see. Let's fix this. I'm not playing Diablo. At this point, we're just chatting. I know it's Magic the Gathering, but I'm not I'm not playing it. All right. So yeah, I like Pompous Gadabout. I'm gonna like this is an instant three for me. Like it's something I and I think that's another thing about being three on the rating. When I see it, I want to play it pretty much every time, and it can help me win games. I think it, that's really what it needs to be for that scaling up procedure. So yeah, this starts out at a three for me. I think it kind of goes up to a 3.5. And for those ones that can really build around it and play those uh, pump spells, fight spells, those kind of things. This could be a four. This isn't the most exciting card for how I typically like to play, but I can recognize when a card has that oomph. And Pompous Gadabout, Gadabout, however you want to say it, has that oomph. I'm going to put it at a 3.5. Hexproof is great. Hexproof on your turn is excellent. Next, we have Green Belt Radical. It's a four mana, three generic, and a green. Centaur Citizen. Disguise 7, and when it's turn face up, put a 1 1 counter on each creature you control. Creature you control gain trample until end of turn. So it's a 4 mana 4 4 um, that you can run out for 3, flip for 7, and put a counter on each of your creatures. I think 4 mana 4 4 is decent. 
Well, it's not something I want to play every time though. I'm going to put this at 2.5. I think it can, if you get it to do what you want, it's a 3. But it, otherwise it's just at 4, 4, 4, 4, which is going to leave it a little underwhelming for Clinton. Next we have Chalk Routine, 4 mana, 3 generic, and a green enchantment. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 2-2 two -two white and blue detective creature token, then investigate. I don't want to be slamming this down on turn 4. There's not going to be a good chance that I'm going to be exiling anything from my graveyard on turn 4. It's going to take till turn 5 to just get a 2-2 two -two and make an investigate token, and that is a big if. I'm going to put this at 0. This is something I just don't necessarily want to play. It's not doing really anything for me. And I know I... What did I give? I think I gave Undergrowth Recon a 1. Because it's at least playable. Maybe. But it might need to drop to 0 as well. Because it, it just needs too much. And it's really, it's really just not helping you win the game. Four minute enchantment, <laughs> and I mean you got you have collect evidence to help, but I collect evidence with something, and the biggest thing I got was a tutu and a clue. I'm gonna put it at zero. I don't think I'm gonna play that at all. Next we have Vengeful Creeper, five mana for generic and a green plant elemental with disguise six. When Vengeful Creeper is turned face up, destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls. 5 mana 5-5 five, five with no trample, no reach, no gain life, no nothing. Just a 5 mana 5-5. Five, five. I'm going to put it at 2. Big bulky creature at 5, you know. And if they have no creatures out, you're swinging in for 5 every turn. You win in 4 turns. So it can help you win a game. But getting it out on the board is not going to be easy. And the disguise is too hard to pull off. Next we have Rubble Belt Maverick, green creature, human detective, win at ETBs, surveil 2, and you can exile it from the yard for a green and put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. Activate only as a sorcery, it's a 1-1. One -one. A 1-1 one -one for 1 that lets you surveil 2 isn't bad, it's not overly exciting, it's not attacking too well. It can put a 1-1 one -one counter later, so it has some versatility. I'm going to give it a 2, I think really good players or players that love green I think they'll be able to do do it right with surveil probably play a few of these manipulate the deck how they want and put the counters where they want so I think there's some big brain green players that's gonna take off but for me most situations I'm gonna look at this and be like eh what else do I got in the pack I'm gonna leave that at a two next we have they went this way three mana two generic and a green Sorcery, search your library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap, shuffle, investigate. I'm going to put this at a 2 as well. I like the card, you know, finding a basic land, ramping you on turn 3. But do you have room for that? Do you have time for that? You can disguise on turn 3. What I really like about this, it not only finds you the land, it also lets you investigate. So it's generating the artifact that you can sack and also giving you an opportunity to draw a card. Um, if you need draw spells, I think this is going to be there for you. But otherwise, you'll want a threat or something like a creature that's going to give you that draw or that, you know, card manipulation ability. I'm going to leave this at a 2. They went this way. Next, we have Slime Against Humanity. I like that. Yeah, I can't say y'all don't like that. Slime Against Humanity. Anyway, <laughs> three mana, two generic, and a green sorcery. Create a zero zero green ooze creature token with trample. Put X one one counters on it where X is two plus the total number of cards you own in exile and in your graveyard that are oozes or are slime against humanity. A deck can have any number of cards named slime against humanity. So you run this out, it makes you a 2-2 two, two ooze, right? You run it out again, you're making a what? A... You're making a 3-3. Three, three, no, wait. Initially you make a 2-2. Two, two. You play it again, you make a 3-3. Three, three. You play it again, you make a 4-4. Four, four. So it just scales up on itself. Um, 3 mana 2-2 two, two with trample. I'll put it at like a 2.5. It does scale up. You run two 3Ds, 
if that ooze happened to sit on the board, you're having a 2-2 two -two with trample, a 3-3 three -three with trample, a 4-4 four -four with trample. I think it scales up, but initially it's just a 2-2 two -two with trample, which is just under exciting for 3. I'm going to put this at a 2. Next we have Tunnel Tipster, 2 mana, 1 generic and a green. Mole Scout, at the beginning of your end step, if a face down creature entered the battlefield under your control this turn, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Tunnel Tipster. You can use it to tap to add a green mana, it's a 1-1. One -one. I like it. Wish it scaled up in power, but um, no, it does. <laughs> I said I wish. I just read it. If you run out a morph creature or disguise creature, it gets a 1 1 counter on it. This scales up pretty much every time and it helps you ramp for two. I'm gonna give this a 2.75. I think this is really excellent. Not gonna help you win the games, but it's an excellent support spell to help get you there. Next, you, we have pick your poison, a green sorcery, choose one. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact, each opponent sacrifices an enchantment, each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. This is very specific. It's it's um, very mana conscious, there's only one green, and they have to sack something so you don't have to target it. But it does give them the option to do what they please, like based on the permanent you choose. I'm going to leave this at a 2. I don't want to run too many of these, it's not specific enough, but I think it is playable. Next we have Nervous Gardener, 2 mana, 1 generic and a green, Dryad with Disguise 1. I kind of like these low cost disguises. When it's turned face up, search your library for a land with a basic land type, reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle. So 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, solid, I put it at like 2.5, but then it also gives you the tutor up a land. Um, I like that a lot. I'm going to put this at a 2.75. Still not overly exciting. It doesn't attack well, but it, it has a little oomph to it. Next we have Loxodon Eavesdropper, a 4 mana, 3 generic, and a green. When it ETBs, investigate. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, it gets a 1-1 one, one counter and gains Vigilance. Plus 3, plus 3. I don't like the mana cost. I think it's solid. 4 mana, 3-3. Three, three, you know, it's almost like a 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Cool. That investigates, helps you generate an artifact and draw a card cool and it scales up cool it's that mana cost I'm getting started on turn four when we know good and well we need to get started on turns one through three so I'm gonna rate this at a two if you want to build around it you can probably take that up to at least a three but for me I don't know if I'll ever even play the detective unless I really need to like I'm running mono green and I need more cards in my build next we have bite down on crime four mana three generic and a green as an additional cost to cast this sorcery, you may collect Evidence 6. This spell costs 2 less to cast if Evidence was collected. So it can be a 2 mana sorcery. Target creature control gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Hmm. So I'm going to rate it off of the 4 mana plus 2 0 deal damage. I, it's kind of weak for 4 mana. And it's not even instant speed. I rate this as a 1, um, especially in comparison to other fight spells. And I don't even like color evidence anyway, so I'm definitely going to rate it as a 1. Bite Down on Crown is not exciting whatsoever. Alright. Next we have V2 Gazi Inspector, 2 mana, 1 generic, and a green. Elf Detective, as an additional cost to cast a spell, you may collect evidence. Reach, whenever ETBs of evidence was collected, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control and gain 2 life. It's a 1-3. I'ma leave this at a 2. It's cheap enough to be playable, but its abilities are under underwhelming. Next we have Airtight Alibi, 3 mana, 2 generic and a green. Enchantment Aura with Flash. Enchant creature, ETBs, untap enchanted creature, gains hexproof until end of turn. If it's suspected, it's no longer suspected. Enchant creature gets 2-2 two -two and can't become suspected. Now this is this is interesting. It's, I'm gonna put it at two. I like that it pumps. I like that it gives hexproof. I think hexproof is really what's doing it. And it's making it so a suspected creature that couldn't block before can now block. I think there's going to be players that can take a card like this and man, have some outrageous blowouts. Me personally, not so much. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to run it, 
but I can see that being a thorn in my side. Next we have Topiary Panther, a 6 mana, 4 generic, 2 green plant cat with trample and basic land cycling. It's a 6-5. I'll put this at 3. Uh, you probably saw me roll my eyes just then. I was like, another 6 mana spell. But it's a 6 mana 6-5 six, with trampling, which I'm cool with. You know, it's going to come down. If they don't deal with it, you're dealing damage across the board in a lot of situations. The basic land cycling for me is what sold it to be a 3. You know, um, throw this away, find the green mana you need early game. And if you happen to have ways to get creatures back from your yard, you're happy to see land cycling creatures every time. I'm going to give it a 3. It can help win games. It could probably scale to a 3.5. But for now, I'm going to leave Topiary Panther at a 3. Next, we have Fanatical Strength. 2 generic, 1... Wait, 2 mana, 1 generic, and a green instant. Target creature gets plus 3, plus 3, and gains trample until end of turn. I'm going to give this 2 as well. I think it's an excellent pump spell. Plus 2, I mean, plus 3, plus 3, and trample is going to win some games. Probably scales up to a 2.5. But it does take a specific moment, creature, and everything to line up. You know, a hexproof creature or the opponent not having um, removal. So, yeah. I'm going to leave Fanatical Strength at a 2. I think it's totally playable. It's not a bad card, but it's not just by itself what's going to help you win the game. So, we've gotten through all of the mono color spells. And I still think I lean on what I said the other day. I think white on paper has just some of the most cost efficient evasive spells out there um, with lifelink uh, flyers uh, with the removal spells I think that was one like three mana exile or something like that bounce spells um, find your cases like there's just a lot of maneuverability uh, return from the graveyard in white surprising for cheap so I think just a in my head right now a mono white one to three mana costing spell with some artifacts and um, pump spells could be really solid probably the best mono color and then if I had to go mono color again I would say red would be after that with those hasty boys and first strike creatures and pump spells I just think red is right there with white but I think white just has that consist I love getting things back from the yard red's not manipulating from the yard I love gaining life red isn't gaining life I like drawing cards red is drawing cards but white is too so for me the consistency is all in white red has that power and strength that I want and if I had to choose a color after that it may be green green has a lot of low cost creatures that can give you that value you want and manipulate into a bigger board state that can get out of hand then I would have to say blue. Um, I think <laughs> blue for the right player is gonna probably be probably number one or two. For me, I see, and I think there's gonna be some times that I bump it over one. I like how some of the spells read out. I just gotta see how it goes. So this is almost like a wild card color for me because it has the spells there, but I don't know if it has the consistency based off of the rarity of the spells. And then I would fall to black. You know, black has a, a lot of good stuff, but it's more like, ah, you got to build it up. And I don't necessarily always want to have to build it up. I don't want to give my opponents things like creatures on my, with my three mana menace creature, things like that. So, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for this set. Um, so far, I think uh, Disguise is probably one of the, is the strongest mechanic. I love that those creatures have Hexproof. There's a lot of ways to flip them. As well. Not a lot of ways, but mm, enough ways for the, to flip them, and the cost is reasonable enough. I really like that. Collect Evidence is not so much. Honestly, I take that back. I think Cloak might be my favorite because cloak is not like disguise cloak can cloak lands instance and sorceries that might not be useful anymore um, uh, a boo-boo creature you was going to use for support it can turn that into something else that has pseudo hexproof with ward so i think cloak is my favorite followed by uh disguise and i don't think collect evidence is on on the board at all for mechanics 
that I like. Well, the mechanic was there. That was emphasized. Haste is good. So it's mostly just disguise going on. Disguise and cloak, and then you can collect evidence as a support theme. So 